Welcome to Prime at 9. I'm Lishnu Jesse. Now the headlines. Cowin Platform Chief and Chief Executive Officer Dr. R.S. Sharma informed that nearly 13 lakh children got jabbed today. Along with the rest of the states, Nagaland also launched vaccination drive for age group 15 to 18 years today. Minister of Health and Family Welfare S. Pang Yu Pong appealed all beneficiaries to get vaccinated. Delhi Health Minister Satyendra Jain said the latest genome sequencing report shows the new variant of coronavirus has been found in 84% of the samples tested in a national capital. The special investigation team investigating the Lakhimpur Kheri violence has named Union Minister Ajay Mishra Taini son Ashish. Ashish, who has already been arrested, was named as the prime accused in the case. Now for the news in details. As India started inoculating children of 15 to 18 age group, Cowin Platform Chief and Chief Executive Officer Dr. R.S. Sharma on January 3rd said that children are quite excited and taking the vaccination very seriously. Nearly 13 lakh children got jabbed today, he informed. Age group 18 was already undertaken earlier, mm -hmm. but 15 to 17 age group will be able to be, you know, they, they will be able to be vaccinated uh, beginning today. We have seen a very good response on, on COVID platform also. A large number of vaccinations have taken place. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, uh, my, my information is that children are, you know, quite excited and taking forward into the, taking, taking uh, uh, their, uh, taking the vaccination very, very, you know, happily, seriously. Mm -hmm. That's how it's happening. So it's good. Absolutely. They are very enthusiastic and, and the numbers today itself are pretty significant. I mean, I can see on my dashboard that in today itself, there have been uh, very, very significant uh, numbers. You know, total is about 15.56 lakhs. And Every year, authorities in Nagaland, especially the Dimapur administration, issue orders banning firecrackers during festive seasons such as Christmas and New Year. Earlier in the month of November 2021, the Dimapur police issued an order banning firecrackers as usual. There was comparatively low use of firecrackers during Christmas. However, New Year's Eve was a regrettable affair as firecrackers assaulted the environment and citizens for hours as people welcomed 2022. The authorities' orders against firecrackers seem to have lost their relevance. Today we have our senior news analyst El Nguli to examine why banning firecrackers do not seem to work. Yes, El. Hello, with the yes, with the recent celebrations, people were, you know, seen using firecrackers despite orders. So is the public's disobedience, uh, you know, a reflection of how the administrations have handled firecrackers and noise pollution in the past? Uh, definitely, because uh, the behavior of a community towards something such as a government order, a government regulation, will depend on how the government, the authority handles that particular situation. Uh, I think uh, we have been hearing about ban on firecrackers ever since we were in school. Every year, the district administration, uh, way back in Woka, in Kohima, even in Dimapur, they will issue orders, do not use firecrackers during this or that festival or this or that season. But uh, unfortunately, uh, I think it's during those times when the government issues orders against firecrackers that we normally use a lot more firecrackers than we, we, we usually do. Now, the problem here is it's a vicious cycle, uh, Lishine. The government will issue an order. The public will not listen. Why? Because it, not, it does not believe that the authority is capable of handling or implementing that order. 
So the government, they also, most of the time, I think they shake their responsibilities and they just, you know, they do kushi kushi, what we call in Nagamese kushi kushi. They will just let it go like that. And it's, it's, it's a cycle that keeps on happening. And I think the, the ban on firecrackers uh, in Naglen, it's, it's something of a mockery. Yes, as we all know that, you know, firecrackers, they continue to be a nuisance, especially to children, the elderly and people with health conditions as well, and also the pets and the environment. So what does the most recent order banning the use of firecrackers say? Oh, uh, yeah. So the Dimapur police, the Dimapur authorities, they issued an order way back in November uh, 2021 saying that... Uh, a certain category of uh, firecrackers will be banned in Dimapur. They did not ban firecrackers entirely. Uh, that's what I want to refer to here. It was not a blanket ban, but it was for a certain category of firecrackers. So it was issued in November 2021. The order said that uh, citizens will be allowed to use firecrackers from, uh, okay, this is very specific, 11.55 to 12 a.m during Christmas and New Year's Eve. And secondly, you are not supposed to use firecrackers near silence zones. That's what the administrative, uh, administration says, silence zones. And these zones are the hospitals, healthcare centers, at the primary and urban levels. And uh, mm, what, what else, schools, even schools were included. You're not supposed to use uh, firecrackers in front of churches and courts also. So within 10, uh, 100 meters of these areas, you are to stay away and you are not to use firecrackers in that area. And thirdly, the authorities say that you can use firecrackers that are environment friendly or what the marketers tell us is green crackers, green firecrackers. So you're supposed to use only that. But I think I do not have to really point out this particular aspect of the order. We all know what happened during Christmas, uh, Christmas, uh, and New Year's Eve. I think there was there was no enforcement, there was no restraint on the part of the public in using firecrackers. Yes, L. Uh, despite orders, you know we have seen people still violating the orders by the authorities and using the firecrackers. So, what do you feel was the problem with the implementation of the order? Uh, there are two sides to it, uh, Lishini. Uh, first thing, whenever there is some kind of an enforcement regulation that is, that is issued by the government, there is supposed to be a mechanism that actually implements it. For example, if you, go, or if you want to go from here to Chumugidima, you have to take a car. Now, if you sit in a car but without driving the vehicle, there is no point, you'll never get to Chumugidima. So the government issued the order uh, banning firecrackers in Dimapur, but uh, so far uh, we, we didn't see the implementation of it. We know it, we, we saw it, we have experienced it. We, who is going to go into the colonies, go to the churches and courtrooms and hospitals and see if people are using firecrackers over there? Who are the government or gov government personnel that will go and check each and every cracker to see if they are environment friendly crackers or green crackers who are the government employees who will go into the colonies and see if the sound emission the sound levels are within permitted norms so these are the various issues the problem with the whole implementation process is that we have a lot of people who have been issuing uh, administrative regulations but there are no practical mechanisms to actually implement it at a practical level yeah, Eldon, who do you think are, you know, the people most affected by uh, the firecrackers? Yeah, Lishani, the, uh, the answer is very obvious here. Uh, we would like to appeal to all our viewers, uh, Hornbill TV viewers, to please refuse to use firecrackers in any form. Because this, uh, this subject is not something new. There are tons and tons of research, medical research, academic research that points to the negative impact of firecrackers on the pollution, or, 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 sorry, on the environment. The pollution it causes and the effect it has on 
the aged, the elderly, the sick, even birds, uh, birds, and, uh, birds and animals. It causes pollution to, uh, to the water bodies. It affects people, especially who, who have mental and emotional health problems, people who are depressed. So the effect, the effect is something that we cannot just uh, we cannot just disregard, because these are real issues. Each and every every person in the community is affected by firecrackers. Al, you have also mentioned about uh, the green or the environment, you know, uh, friendly firecrackers. So uh, now we see that people are opting for this kind of firecrackers. So can you please share what is green firecrackers and the benefits of it? Yeah, uh, environment friendly firecrackers uh, is one of the strangest misnomers that the modern society has come up with. It's like saying healthy poison, you know? It's like, oh, this is poison, but it's very healthy. You drink it, you won't die. But of course, uh, you'll, you'll have paralysis. So there is no green or environmental fre environment friendly firecracker here we're talking about. It's a marketing term, it's a marketing gimmick to actually promote a firecracker that has reduced emission levels and has reduced amounts of chemicals used. For example, in conventional firecrackers, you use uh, aluminum. And uh, you use uh, barium, you use magnesium. So these are in reduced levels. So the idea is not that you take the whole uh, negative elements out of the firecracker. You don't take out the polluting elements. You don't take out the harmful chemicals. You only reduce it. So just as uh, C-STEP scientists, research scientists call uh, Pradima Singh said, green or environment friendly firecrackers do not serve any pur purpose no matter how lovely it sounds they still have chemicals in them they still emit a lot of noise they pollute the air no matter it, it might be called uh, the most environment friendly firecracker in the world but it still has chemicals that will pollute the air it will affect your lungs it will affect babies pets and animals so this is not something uh, we should really look at. The name is not something we should consider b before using uh, firecrackers. We should altogether not use firecrackers literally. Thank you, Al, for sharing on this very informative story. Thank you, Lishini. Government has dismissed the media reports in which it was alleged that expired vaccines are being administered in India under its national COVID-19 vaccination program. Union Health Ministry has termed the report as false and misleading and based on incomplete information. The ministry in a statement said that the Central Drugs Standard Control Organization on 25th October last year in response to Bharat Biotech's letter has approved the extension of shelf life of Covaxin from 9 months to 12 months. It said similarly the shelf life of Covishield has been extended by the national regulator from 6 months to nine months on 22nd February 2021. The ministry has clarified that the shelf life of vaccines is extended by the national regulator based on comprehensive analysis and examination of stability study data furnished by the vaccine manufacturers. The Omicron variant of COVID-19 continues to raise the alarm in the national capital as Delhi Health Minister Satyendra Jain on Monday said the latest genome sequencing report shows the new variant of coronavirus has been found in 84% of the samples tested. The development comes after the city recorded over 4,000 fresh COVID-19 cases according to a health bulletin issued today. As per genome sequencing reports of December 30th to 31st from three labs at Institute of Liver and Biliary Sciences, Lok Nayak Hospital and National Center for Disease Control, 84% samples were infected with Omicron. Most of the cases are of Omicron, Jane said in the Delhi Assembly. The two-day Delhi Assembly began today. According to the health bulletin issued later on Monday, the capital has recorded around 4,000 new cases of the coronavirus and the positivity rate has increased to 6.5%, the minister said. 
The Delhi Disaster Management Authority on Sunday had warned that a red alert can be sounded in the city if the daily COVID case positivity rate crosses 5%. Just a day after today, the TPR climbed to 6.5%. Jane said some experts have said the cases will peak in a week, but it's conjecture. On the day of New Year, the national capital also reported one COVID-related death. कल दिल्ली में 3194 एकतीस सौ पॉजिटिव केस आए थे आ, कल पॉजिटिविटी थी 4.59 परसेंट और एक डेथ हुई थी आज अभी थोड़ी देर में जो हेल्थ बुलेटिन इशू होगा उसमें लगभग 4000 के करीब पॉजिटिव केसेस हैं और पॉजिटिविटी साढ़े छः परसेंट के करीब आने वाली है आ, दिल्ली के अंदर पिछले 10-15 दिन से केसेज काफ़ी बढ़ रहे हैं जब से ओमिक्रोन आया है काफ़ी तेजी से बढ़ रहे हैं परंतु संतोष की बात यह है कि लोग बड़े नॉर्मल से लक्षण हैं बहुत ही कम बीमार हो रहे हैं हॉस्पिटलाइजेशन की बहुत कम जरूरत पड़ रही है पिछली बार जब इतने लोग पेशेंट होते थे बीमार तो बहुत बड़ी संख्या में लोग हॉस्पिटल में होते थे कल जो अस्पताल के अंदर जो टोटल लोग थे दिल्ली के जो पेशेंट थे वो सिर्फ दो पेशेंट थे सिर्फ कुल दिल्ली के जो पेशेंट थे दो पेशेंट थे दिल्ली के जो अस्पतालों में थे तो इतनी बड़ी संख्या में आने के बावजूद भी बड़े संतोष की बात है तो ज़्यादा लोगों को घबराने की जरूरत नहीं सतर्क रहने की जरूरत है आ, दो साल का एक्सपीरियंस बता रहा है कि भाई मास्क लगाएं तो इससे बच सकते हैं और जल्द ही दिल्ली के लोग सब मिलकर इस कोरोना की नए रूप को जिसे ओमिक्रॉन कहते हैं इसको भी जल्द ही हराएंगे A crew member at Cordelia cruise ship which departed from Mumbai to Goa with over 2000 people on board including passengers are the crew members has tested positive for COVID-19 According to the reports the crew member has been isolated at the ship while covid tests of all those on board including 1471 passengers 595 crew members are been done however their test reports are awaited according to news agency ani the cruise ship is harbored near the mormugao port cruise terminal vasco Meanwhile, in another development, the sizable number of tourists that descended on Goa for the Christmas New Year festival season may be behind the COVID-19 positivity rate, crossing 10% on Sunday, officials said. Ahead of Uttarakhand Assembly polls, Aam Atmi Party National Convener Arvind Kejriwal on Monday promised rupees 1 crore ex gratia to families of those security personnel and soldiers of the state who died in action while addressing parties Nav Parivartan Yatra at Parrot Ground in Dehradun. Kejriwal also promised a government job to all ex-servicemen of the defence after their retirement if the party comes to power. भाई साहब बाबा साहब का एक सपना था उनको लगता था कि अगर समाज के हर बच्चे को गरीब के दलित के देश के हर बच्चे को अगर अच्छी शिक्षा मिल गई तो सारे समाज से गरीबी दूर हो सकती है बराबरी का हक मिल सकता है उनका सपना था कि हर बच्चे को अच्छी से अच्छी शिक्षा मिले सत्तर साल में इतनी सरकारें आई किसी ने बाबा साहब का सपना पूरा नहीं किया जानबूझ के जानबूझ के हम लोगों को इस देश के लोगों को अनपढ़ रखा इन्होंने सारी पार्टियों ने मिलकर ताकि इनको वोट बैंक बना के रखे ये हमारा वोट बैंक वो हमारा वोट बैंक वो हमारा वोट बैंक ताकि इनको गरीब रखें ये जानबूझ के गरीब रखते हैं कि मजदूर सस्ते में मिल जाए इन लोगों को इन सारी पार्टियों ने मिलकर जानबूझ के अगर दिल्ली के अंदर हम लोग पांच साल में स्कूल इतने अच्छे कर सकते हैं दिल्ली के अंदर अगर हम इतने शानदार सरकारी स्कूल कर सकते हैं पचहत्तर साल के अंदर ये बीजेपी कांग्रेस वाले स्कूल ठीक नहीं कर सकते थे क्या द स्पेशल इन्वेस्टिगेशन टीम इन्वेस्टिगेटिंग द लाखीमपुर खेरी वायलेंस विच क्लेम्ड एट लाइफ इन इट्स 5000 पेज चार्ट शीट हैज नेम यूनियन मिनिस्टर अजय मिश्रा टेनी सान आशीष आशीष हु हैज ऑलरेडी बीन अरेस्टेड वॉज नेम एज अ प्राइम एक्यूज इन द केस So far 13 accused including Ashish have been sent to jail. The name of one more person Virendra Shukla has been added in the charge sheet. 
He has been charged under Section 201 of Indian Penal Code, according to the prosecution lawyer. The SIT filed the charge sheet almost three months after the incident that took place in Tikunia village of Lakhimpur Kheri district in Uttar Pradesh. Four farmers and a journalist were killed after they were allegedly mowed down by a vehicle. Three BJP workers also lost their lives in the violence. The October 3, 2021 violence in Tikonia broke out when a group of farmers was protesting against a visit of Uttar Pradesh, Deputy Chief Minister Keshav Prasad Maurya to Ajay Mishra's native place for an event. All the accused, including drivers of the three SUVs and associates of Ashish Mishra and former Union Minister Akhilesh Das, nephew Ankit Das, are under arrest and uh, and are currently lodged in the Lakhimpur Kheri Jail. Five thousand की charge sheet जो अभी सीजीएम कोर्ट में पुलिस द्वारा दाखिल की गई है, वो अभी मुलजिमान को काफी उसकी नहीं दी गई है। ऐस पर ला, ऐस पर रूल, वो काफी हमको दी जाएगी संज्ञान लेने के बाद। अभी न्यायिक अधिकारी उसको पढ़ेंगे, उसका उल्लोकन करेंगे, और उल्लोकन करने के बाद संज्ञान लेने के पश्चात ही उसकी कापी मुलजमान को दी जाएगी जो मुलजमान को कापी दी जाएगी मैं उसका अवलोकन करूंगा पढूंगा उसके बाद क्या कुछ किस पे लगाया है उन्होंने किस आधार पे चार्जशीट फाइल की है तभी कुछ बताने की स्थिति में होगी हां हां ऐसा 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 प्रोसिक्यूशन की तरफ से बताया गया है कि वीरेंद्र शुक्ला का नाम धारा 201 के बाद रणनीति तैयार करेंगे कि क्या आरोप किस पे लगाया है Vice President Venkaya Naidu on Monday spoke out against hate speech, saying it goes against the country's culture, constitution and ethos and that every person has a right to practice and preach his or her faith. Addressing and even marking the 150th death anniversary of St. Kuryakose Ilyas Chavara in Kotayam, Kerala, the Vice President said hate speech and writings are against the country's culture, heritage, tradition and constitutional rights and ethos. Every person has a right to practice and preach his or her faith in the country. Practice your religion but don't abuse and indulge in hate speech and writings, he said, expressing his disapproval of attempts to ridicule other religions and create dissensions in society. Observing that there is a dire need to inculcate the spirit of service from an early age, Naidu suggested that once the pandemic is over, both government and private schools must make community service of at least Two to three weeks compulsory for students. Manipur, Manipur Chief Minister and Birin Singh on Monday launched a COVID-19 vaccination drive for children aged 15 to 18 at the Jawaharlal Nehru Institute of Medical Sciences in Imphal. Launching the vaccination drive, the Chief Minister urged all eligible children to vaccinate at the earliest. The entire nation is thankful to Honorable PM Sri Narendra Modi ji for initiating the vaccination drive for children aged 15 to 18. I'm pleased to have launched Manipur's COVID vaccination drive for children at JNIMS today. I urge all eligible children to take the vaccines at earliest, CM Birin tweeted. India began the vaccination for the age group 15 to 18 years on Monday. It may be mentioned that only co-vaccine will be administered in this population category. Covid ki am saathi ba vaccine si kape kape phane am kape phane am protect ho gaye. But mere sujik ano ko mo omicron ato ko thay na lakhsi da. Ida kape ko to ba isasi angang si sujik ko ida mebe anxiety ato ko guardian si ko mebe anxiety to hungry ra ka na honorable prime minister na am na atu ko matam da na ibo omicron ki amu ano ko. In the unfortunate incident where the Chakasang Mission Center Church was engulfed in a massive fire in Fitzroy early on Monday morning, is suspected to have occurred due to a short circuit. The OC of Peck Fire Station informed Hornville TV that he spoke to the pastor as soon as he heard about the fire but was advised not to send the fire brigade as the fire was already dosed. 
He informed that the fire station is 67 kilometers away and is the only fire station for the entire district of Peak. He added that they were on the way to the site but returned back as the fire was already put out. No loss of life was reported while estimated loss of property is yet to be ascertained, the OC informed. <laughs> That's all we have for now. Stay tuned for more news with Hornbull TV.